I want you to see, um, regardless of what the case may be, that whether you have $3.18 billion or a dollar and 83 cents. Hey, look, we, we, we're going to deal with it as we come. We're going to deal with it as we go. But there was a situation, and this is not in Titus, but there was a situation where Peter came and asked um, Jesus, he says, how much, how many times should I forgive my brother who sins against me? Seven times? And Jesus said, look, not just seven times, but seven times 70 times, which is up to the 400 times a day. You know? <laughs> we can't. But anyway, Jesus said, so therefore the kingdom of heaven is like, can be, no, he said the kingdom of heaven can be, can be compared to a king who went to settle accounts went to settle these debts with his servants. Mm -hmm. And one of the servants who he went to settle the debt with owed, I think it was 10,000 or 1,000 denied. Mm -hmm. And when he told the uh, servant, look, you know, it's time, it's time, it's pay up time. I've been letting you go long enough, it's, it's it's time to pay the piper. And he said, he said, Master, look, I don't have it. I don't have anything. He said, and, um, the king said, well, take him, take his wife, his cheering. He said, and sell them. And sell them off. So that, you know, because he can't pay me, it's, it's, he had long enough. So, 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 get his family and sell them bit by bit. And so he said, he, the, 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 Jesus said that the servant fell on his face, yeah. prostrate, and said, please don't do this. That's right. Please, please. That's right. He said, um, if give me some more time. Give me more time, and I will pay up. And said, the king had compassion on him and told him, don't worry about it. You don't owe nothing. Go for it. You don't owe anything. Get up. And go for it. Yep. It said later on, the servant went and found one of his fellow servants Priest pastor. who owed him, uh, 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 I think it was a hundred pence, something like that. But anyway, check this out. I did my research, and what Jesus said that the first servant who got everything forgiven owed was equal to 3.18 billion dollars. Mm -hmm. And then it says when that servant got his debt forgiven, he went to his fellow servant and said, you owe me, yeah. give me my money, you owe me 100 pence, which equals up to $1.83. And that servant said, I don't have it. Give me enough time and I, you know, and I'll get you your money. He said, no, he began to choke him. And he began to choke him for owing a dollar and eighty-three cent. And he choked him and he threw him in prison and locked him up. He said, "When the other servants saw what he did, it hurt them." And they went to the king and said, "Look, master." He said, "Now, John, John, who you just forgave, we heard about your graciousness and, and, and your and your 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 compassion on him." You forgave him $3.18 billion. You didn't even say that he had to pay you back. But once he asked you yeah. to give you time enough, you had compassion enough to free him of everything. Yeah. And this man, and he went and seen Mike Mike, and, 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 and Mike Mike asked him, give me a little bit more time. And he began to choke him out because he owed him a dollar that he said. My God, my God. Said the king. What's Man, angry. And when he got him, called him to bring to him and told him about his mess. He said, I forgave you all that debt. He said, You begged me so that you you to give you more time to pay you back. He said, I did you one greater. He said, I forgave you of everything and told you you don't owe me anything else. 
And after that, when he has forgiven, he says, now, you're going to find yourself a dollar. I mean, your fellow servant. Not, not nobody who worked for you, but he just borrowed a cup of sugar for you. And now you're going to choke him out and throw in him in prison for all you a dollar and 83 cents compared to the $3.18 billion that I gave you up. And you didn't even give him a chance. Say, go make the money and give it back to me. You choked him out and put him in prison. He said, I tell you what, y'all get him and throw him in jail yeah. and let him torment him. Yeah. Until, until all that debt be paid. And you know what? And, and, and in my research, it said that three point, the, the, the 1,000 denarii that he owed is 2,000 lifetimes worth of pay in that day. See, and Jesus was using, he was what is called hyperbole, you know what, hype. You know, he was using that, but he was explaining the situation to the disciples and to those who was hearing him that, that look, 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 if God is gracious enough, to all give you forgiveness and all the stuff you've been doing. Mm -hmm. So why do you have to give? Give others. That's right. You're very careful who owe you. You know, you know you did some stuff. You know you owe some stuff. You know you, you, you raise your hand. <laughs> Don't stand up, but raise your hand if you ever been in there. Yes. Yeah. How much time you got? You know, I'm still in there. I'm still paying some bills. <laughs> He says, so therefore, forgiveness, you have to treat it the same way as, as debt. He said that the Father has forgiven you. And you can't forgive. No, you, you got to stay mad. You got to stay mad for a little while because you want to torment people who ask you for forgiveness. You want to choke them out until they feel something for all of you. People, you said I'd never forgive them. Why? Not because, you know, it, it, because you want them to hurt. And, and it's not to minimize what they did to you or what they owe you. That's just not the point. Because if you don't know how much you've been forgiven of, you won't offer that forgiveness to nobody else. If you, listen to me. People who don't know how much they're loved will not offer love to anybody else. Why? Right. Because they think that it is a commodity that yeah. they can't afford to lose. You know, people are hurt, and people are hurt people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's right. yeah. mm -hmm. But what God has called us to is to realize how much that we've been forgiven of so that we can freely offer that forgiveness even if they didn't ask for it. That's right. Mm -hmm. You're set. That's your setting. That's where your heart is at. You don't have to ask my forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I forgive you. It, 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 it does not excuse what somebody did. Your forgiveness doesn't, doesn't get them off the hook for what they did. It don't mean that they get to, you know, la 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 la. It just, it really means that, hey, you are not indebted to me anymore. I release you from my hurting heart because me holding on to a forgiveness only hurts my heart. It don't hurt nobody else. And so what God is trying to get us to see, especially those of us are in, who are in the same house, we want to torment each other because of what they did or didn't do. Those of us in the same house who wants to hold on to unforgiveness because of what they did to me. And so what God is trying to get us to see is that they release them from that day. My God. Thank you. Because you've been released from. God will never hold nothing over your head. Why? Because he killed Jesus for that. And raised him from the dead. Jesus died for that. So that you could be released. So that you'd be freed enough to release other people. Oh my goodness. Oh my 
within it. And that's why we can walk free from the circumstances. Why? Because we are free indeed. Because he who the Son set free is what? Free indeed. It goes down for wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is Specifying Titus chapter 2. Grace taught me that, y'all. Grace taught me that, Mom. It taught me that I didn't have to hold anything against anybody for what they did to me. Why? Because it's, it, it is not mine to hold. We make horrible judges. So you saying that? Yes, those. Jesus is saying that, you know. And 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 and, and let me stay here for a little, just one more time. Again, your forgiveness of them absolutely does not uh, uh, cause people to walk free from what they did it That's caused right. them to walk free from you yes vengeance is mine said the lord yes yes he knows what he's doing what do you go titus chapter two compassion you there okay i'm going to get you to start <coughs> go up just a little bit. Let me show you where to go. I could do it because I thought me and her had the same type of Bible. But nevertheless, I'm, I'm trying to go. See, what happened <laughs> What had happened was is that my, my note tablet that I had with all my notes on it, it did. Mm-hmm. And it wouldn't charge at all. So I have nothing but the spirit, which is everything that I need. Oh, However, yeah. we're going to be in. I ain't even used to using this right here to come out with you. Um, but nevertheless, we're going to see what God is doing. It's Titus chapter 2. It says, But you are to proclaim things consistent with sound doctrine. Remember what we said. This is Paul giving instructions to Titus concerning this evil place called Creek, this island out there in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you know, they, 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 they used to nothing but killing and murder and robbing and tearing up people's houses and all that type of stuff they had it going on. Mm-hmm. Paul sent young Titus there and said, I'm going to leave you there. Set these things straight. This is what I need you to do. And he's giving him instruction, but let me tell you something. What we get ready to get into, y'all better open your eyes because you're going to need it. He says, but you are to proclaim things consistent with sound teaching. Older men are to be self-controlled. Listen to this now. Older men are to be self-controlled, worthy of respect. You know, don't be around right here come out, you know, a uh, 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 young man respect me if you're not worthy of the respect. You know, don't be around right here talking about, look, young man, pull your bitches up. And every time they yeah. turn around, they meet you at the liquor house. Yeah. <laughs> He says, worthy of respect, sensible and sound in faith, and love and endurance. He said, in the same way, uh uh-oh, older women. (laughs) See, this is, I'm not picking on, I'm reading scripture. Older women are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderous, meaning keep running your mouth about stuff you ain't got no business doing. Not slaves to excessive drinking. Stay out the liquor house, stay out the liquor stove. Just like he said to the older men. I mean, to the young men earlier in, in verse in chapter one. Remember he said that? He said, don't give it too much. Uh, remember that? Remember that last week? And he said the same thing. He said, you have, he said, listen, older women, you are not to be out here drinking. Every time you turn around, you somewhere. With, with one thrown up and your legs up and down all around. 
It's instruction. It's sound instruction. Why? Because this island was full of that. And what he's doing is giving them instruction as a church. You are to look different. Mm -hmm. You don't do that. You, you're not looking. Really, you come out of that. You know how to talk to these young young women. Why? Because you come out of that. You know how it is to walk there. You tell the baby that that's gonna end up, it's gonna, it's gonna mess you up. I know. I used to live that way. Watch this now. He says to the women, he said, they are to teach what is good. So that they may encourage the young women to love their husbands and to love their children. That's right. To be self-controlled, pure, work is at home. You see, now, now this is old today. I know this back here, women in work. Work is at home. <laughs> work is at home. <laughs> That's what he's saying. He's simply saying, you know, know how to handle your house. Yeah. So he's not saying don't go get a job these right, days yeah. and stuff like that. He's just simply saying, you know how to handle your house as a woman. You know what you want your house to look like. You know what your house wants to be like. Yeah. And you know how respectful you want your house to be. Generally. He says, they are to teach what is good so that they may encourage the young women to love their husbands mm -hmm. and to love their children, to be self controlled, workers at home, kind and in submission to their husbands. <coughs> so that God's word will not be slandered. Y'all hear that, women? No, 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 about two women looked up. Y'all know y'all ain't reading that one. Right? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I know you ain't too. But I'm saying, it, it's simply saying, and y'all heard me teach on submission before with women and men. Men, we are to submit as yeah. women. Women, we are to submit. Men, we are to submit. submit. Husband, submit to you. Why wives submit to be a husband? It simply means that y'all fight each other to see who can serve who first. What, what are you arguing? What you arguing about? You gonna listen to me or else? Or who gonna be the first to fix who plate? I'm serious. I'm, I'm, I'm exception. to the women, but notice he gave instruction to the older men first. Yeah. So that means here that what is good for the goose is good for the gander. So therefore he speaks to us. And so these roles and these things that we do, especially in our culture, are interchangeable. We are to help. Yeah. In the house, whatever, we take on our roles to do what we do. Where we're weak at, women, don't put us down. Period. Women, husbands, what the wife, the things that she can't do, you do. You do it. Yeah. Like be quiet sometimes. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> Simple instructions. It, 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 it just, it, it just saying because we 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 are accused as men or as husbands as not being attentive, not listening, not wanting to hear, not wanting to do, wanting to do it our way. Hey, have you ever been lost and didn't want her to tell you? <laughs> remember one time we was coming from, this is over 15 years ago, we was coming from Durham or somewhere, and she, Corey, don't get out of that lane because you're going to go there and say, I've been up, y'all know where I'm going. <laughs> right? Submit. <laughs> Drive, no, I'm going. Okay, 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 okay. And I, that's right, okay. <laughs> so I'm going, and she hushed. 
But I went out for the exit. I wasn't supposed to get off for it. <laughs> and she looked at me. Y'all know she was getting ready to say, I want you. The first thing I told her, don't you say that. Wait till we get our way. Wait till I find my way out, then you flip. <laughs> I need you right now. So hold my hand. <laughs> now I want to listen, you know. But wait a minute. Don't fuss and argue with me right now. Because we both lost. <laughs> Let's stick together. We got to but in the reality, we, we just, our communications are different, you know? And, and, um, and, and it's just, it, it's crazy how it works because we think differently. And it's supposed to complement each other. However, the enemy gets in there and he used the differences in how we communicate to make us think that we are against each other. And it's a lot. A lot of times she's getting mad and I'm getting mad over something that the enemy is stirring up, but we are not using our differences to complement each other. I'm saying she's talking too much, and she's saying I ain't listening to nothing. And it ain't that she's talking too much, and it ain't that I ain't listening. It's just that she ain't listening and I ain't talking enough. Let that marinate. Okay, okay, and, and, and I was talking with other um, people. I've talked to other women about this, and I've talked to other men about this. Uh, um, and in the same situation, this is how crazy it can be that, uh, did that even burn up? Okay. <laughs> did the bride can be out in the yard washing his car? Washing his face, get it all nice and my bride could come out chippy. <laughs> you missed the spot, you missed the spot. I ain't missed nothing. I ain't missed nothing. I didn't miss anything. I, I got it, I got it. Another woman can walk by and say, hey sir, you, you missed the spot. Thank you, darling. <laughs> <laughs> ain't that right? Yeah. And the reason why I can say it because I have done the same thing. Not in every scenario, not in that particular scenario. It's just the, how, how our minds work. And it causes us to think that she is the enemy where she's not. She's a, she, and I'm thinking, and then I'm just as wrong because somebody else can tell me, but she can't. Mm -hmm. And it's almost a default. Until you, you, you have to stick it out and learn this language of each other and know that we ain't each other's enemies. We're in the same house, and, 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 but we can't keep looking at each other as the enemy because she would never tell me nothing that hurt me. But it seems like the first thing the enemy says, she trying to hurt me, or she ain't, and she ain't, she don't think that I can do it, or I'm doing too much, one or the other, you know. And that's not even her thoughts. Her thoughts is, he can do it, but he got to listen to me first. And so, in order for a house to work like it's supposed to in a godly way, we have to first understand that we are not there to harm each other. She's not there to destroy me. I'm not there to destroy her. But sometimes it seems like. It, it feels that way, that, you know, and it, and it depends on, and I'm not saying this is everywhere and everything, but some variation that hits us because our communications are different. Mm -hmm. And so what Paul, what Paul is telling Titus is explain to these young women and explains to these older women and younger men and all this stuff. He said, explain to them that they can't bring anything into their houses that would affect what is already hard to do, which yeah. is communicate. Mm -hmm. So don't be getting drunk. Mm -hmm. He said, don't be slanderous. Mm -hmm. Young men, he said, young men, you know, don't be given to worldly lust. Don't bring that stuff into your house because it's going to affect what's already hard, which is communication. Mm -hmm. Grace taught me that. Grace taught me that. And I still have to, I, I still have to, Form, formulate my mind sometimes when she's talking. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the enemy still says that. And it's not true because that's not who she is. 
keep y'all out in our house. <laughs> but listen, listen. Check this out. He says, in the same way, encourage the young men to be self-controlled in everything. Make yourself an example of good works with integrity and dignity in your teaching. This is where he's talking to me now. He's talking to me. He said, he said, in the same way, encourage the young men to be self-controlled in everything. Make yourself an example of good works with integrity and dignity in your teaching. Be able to, when you bring out this, this, the, the truth, be already be, be prepared to walk what you talk. Mm -hmm. You know, don't practice what you preach. Preach what you practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Preach what you practice. If you don't practice this, you can't teach it. Mm -hmm. That's why I have to be able to invite y'all into my craziness and hurt. Not crazy. <laughs> because I have to show you by stuff. I have to explain to you how horrible that I can be at it, but yet we're going through it together. Mm -hmm. To walk with each other. That's the thing, uh, uh, Miss Arnold. We walk together. We do life together as a ministry. We do life together. And so therefore, but we come in and we, we put our shields up and we don't let nobody in our space and we can't do life like that. Why? Because we ain't letting you in just a little bit. We have to say, come to the cookout and stuff. But that's it. Don't ask me nothing. I ain't gonna tell you nothing. And, and I understand you can't tell and talk and stuff like that. But I'm just saying we, we ought to at least be free enough to listen. That's why he says, women, don't be slanderous. Because it's easy to mess up somebody's life. <clears throat> because women do a lot of excessive talking. It's just pure, it's, it's natural. <laughs> Slaves, women, women, women. Make yourself an example of good works with integrity and dignity to your teaching. Your message is to, is to be sound beyond reproach. Many of you ought to teach the gospel without any uh, 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 adultery in it. Adultery is simply mixing something in there that yeah. is not supposed to be there. That's right. That is, that's it. That's right. Put something in that is not supposed to be there. That's Invite right. something to the party that's not supposed to be there. He said, do not adulterate the gospel so that it won't have reproach on it. That's right. Let your gospel be Jesus-centered and not me-centered. I, right. I ain't up here telling y'all, uh, um, you know, five ways to get your pastor a new vehicle. Slaves are to submit to their masters and everything. And let me back this up right here. Let me park the car. Because it's not talking about chattel slavery that was done to us here in America. That's not what he's talking about. He's simply talking about workers. You have indentured servants. You have those who have rented themselves out to work for a person. That's all what he's saying. To submit to their masters and everything. And to be well pleasing. Not talking back. Or stealing, don't be saying, Where's my job? I got this on the job. And, and, and you stole it at the warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> he said, But demonstrating utter faithfulness so that they may adorn the teaching of God, our Savior, and everything. So, what he's saying here, you don't be on the job and they say, She talking about she's saved. Yeah. Look at it. Every time you turn around, she up in the office. They running a report on him or him, you know? That's what he's saying, you, why? Because they know you and they're watching you more than they're watching everybody else. Why? Because they want to have an occasion yeah. to bring slander yeah. on Jesus Christ. Yes. And that stuff y'all talking about in church. Mm -hmm. Watch this now. He says, so your conduct on the job is not to be one of them. Oh my goodness. Where do you go? Where, where do you go to church at? Because I, 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 my, we all have sons. Y'all feed me and all that stuff. They need to be asking you instead of repulsed by you. No way I'll go over there. 
for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, instructing us or teaching us. Somebody said, Grace taught me that. Grace taught me that. Taught me that. So he's saying everything above mm -hmm. that he just given instruction for Titus to give instruction to these houses and to the church and to the people, to the younger men, to the older men, to the younger women, to the older women. Grace teaches them. The grace of God in your life shows you that, works that out in you. Mm -hmm. All those things that you can't do, grace does. Grace does. That's right. Instruction teaches you that. That's what, you know, and, and, and you know, religious and, and, and legalism hates the grace of God. Yes. You're talking about, you know, uh, uh, you teaching that grace stuff and, and, and give people a, a, a license to sin. Tell them, you sinning just fine without a license. Come on. Well, I was saying, I ain't had to say, well, let me check see if I got my grace, my grace for us. No. And, and, and so it's foolishness. But it tells us what grace teaches us. Grace instructs us. Grace instructs us how to live right. Yes. And, get, and empowers us to live right. Why? Because grace is a person. Mm -hmm. It is Jesus Christ himself. Yes. Watch this now. He says, for the grace of God has appeared, talking about Christ, bringing salvation for all people, instructing us to deny godlessness. See that? That's what grace gives you. It empowers you to deny godlessness or ungodliness. Mm -hmm. You know that catch that you get before you get ready to cuss? <laughs> that is grace. <laughs> yeah. repeat, repeat that as I saw you. I ain't gonna say it. Ain't gonna say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you repeat know, loud enough this so they hear you say, I ain't gonna say it. <laughs> it says, Grace teaches us to deny, to deny you know, sin and unrighteousness. Watch this. What else? It says, instructing us to deny godlessness and worldly lust, meaning that what's worldly lust? It's lusting after the things that the world wants and would do anything for. Fame, riches, all that type of stuff. It said grace teaches us to deny worldly lust. Lust ain't nothing but desire. Uh, so if we, we think lust, when we hear lust, what we think about? Come on. Sex. <laughs> Thank you. But it just be desire. You can lust for anything. I'm right now, I'm lusting for a ham hock. There's no big collars on the side. <laughs> it's just strong desire. Just desire. He said, but worldly lust, he said, grace teaches us not to uh, 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 fall for that stuff. Not to, you know, I'm going to do what I got to do to make it in the world because I want to be famous. Now, all that type of stuff, he said, the grace of God teaches you not to bless out the, what the world lets out there. Huh? And unmarried sex, too. Just in case. But we all have them. We are, they, put, not, not say have them, but we all are tempted in these ways. Now, sometimes I want to be famous. If it ain't nothing but if I could, man, if I could, if they knew, if they knew when I was growing up, like co-pastor knew that I could dance like James Brown. <laughs> I've been up there. I've been, I've been up there with, I've been up there with me some trophies, some Grammys and stuff like that. Mm, what would it be like, Lord, have mercy. I, I, think, I think I got some judges. Can't dance a lick, but I still think. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Don't leave that here by myself. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's keep it going. So I'm going to get you out of here. He says, <clears throat> it says, worldly, to deny worldly lust and to live in a sensible, righteous, and godly way in the present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Watch this. He said, for the grace of God has appeared, 
bringing salvation for all people. Not as don't you say not to all people, but for all people. Meaning that the potential is there for all people, but yeah. not everybody receives it. Instructing us to deny godlessness and worldliness and to live in a sensible, righteous, and godly way in the present age while we wait for the blessed hope. Pause it. He said, in the godly way in the present age. What? what and why is that so significant and why we must pay attention? Because the, this present age is dark. Everything about this present age is dark and it's pulling against you. It's like we are island and it's crashing waves all around us. Yeah. It's darkness all around us. Yeah. He said, but the grace of God instructs us yes. how to walk up right. <laughs> Yes. The grace of God comes into my life and instructs me. Hey, boy, don't you say it? <laughs> hey, boy, don't you do it? Hey, boy, walk like this. Come on, we got this. <sighs> hey, girl, that's not who you are. I, I know you, you, you have a right to say it. And I know you feel like you want to do it. I know, I know she's ringing your chimes, and I know he's ringing your chimes in your phone. But it's not who you are. It's, it's not. I, I, after, after the fear is gone, it's going to leave you. It is going to leave you, and it's not going to be. It never is what you thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. It always presents itself yeah. as. Okay. And you know it ain't, but how else? Right. Eh, you know how we play close to the fire? <laughs> God have mercy. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. I want this. You know? And there's not a day that goes by that there's not opportunity to walk in ungodly. And I know if it happened to me, y'all sitting there looking like, <laughs> and I'm holier than y'all. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm the man of God. You know, he ain't supposed to be facing temptation. No, no, it happens to all. If, if Jesus was faced with temptation, don't believe your little five part gonna be faced with temptation. That's right. That's true. That's true. Jesus said, Lord, he said, Father, if there be another way, let me take it. Holler at me. I don't want to do it. It's hard. However, if it ain't another way, don't do what I want. Do what you want to do. <laughs> and so our life, baby, our life, children, our life, saints, is a walk, is a journey with him along the way. And he's not trying to get you right. He's showing you that you are right. Yes. Regardless of how you feel, your feeling going to feel all kinds of stuff. But you are not, the truth is not in how you feel in the moment. Just because the, 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 what you call, the, the, the gin and juice or the gym bean or the, or the reefers, just because it's calling your name, don't mean you got it. Yeah. Don't mean that it's you. You're, you're not, you're, it, your holiness don't flow from how you feel in the moment. Your holiness flows from who you are in Christ. And that will always be so. And the first thing the enemy say is, huh, you call yourself safe and you thought that thought or you felt that way. So I am. Right. Every thought that comes to me ain't my thought and I know how to pick them. Okay. All right. I'm getting close out. Didn't get a chance. Oh, my juice. <laughs> he says, he gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people for his own possession, eager to do good works. Mm -hmm. Proclaim these things, encourage and rebuke with all authority, let no one disregard you. He's talking to me now, but he's talking to you as well. He says, proclaim these things, encourage and rebuke with all authority. When, when encourage and rebuke at the same time, mm -hmm. use the same authority. Yeah, that's the same authority you encourage with, you rebuke with. The same authority you rebuke with, you encourage with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it says that God has cleansed y'all. I want you to stand up now. 
I want you to stand up now. If you've got bad feet, stand on the other one. <laughs> he says, keep it going. He says, he says, he's proclaimed you, claims you for people for himself. Ready to do good works. Now, he's saying here that the good works is not what saves you. He says, this is where your joy comes from. From the good works. Those things that you do from your heart. You know, whether somebody asked you or whether it's just something that you wanted to do. He said, that's grace teaching you that. That's how you know I live in you. Because you remember before salvation, you been doing that type of stuff. You done had an inkling, but you weren't doing that type of stuff. And it meant nothing when you did. You know how we can manage to do a couple of good deeds before we hit the little stuff? Remember how you just like that? Miss Susan. Remember, remember when we cleaned up real good when we wanted to go to the party in high school, you know? He said, you, 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 it was for you. He said, but now you do stuff like that, but it's in you. And, it, 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 and regardless of what you, what you get out of it, or you don't get nothing out of it all, at all. It's just who you are. But it's the beauty of your salvation. And grace taught you. Come on, say it with me. Grace taught me that. Grace, grace taught, taught, taught me that. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We bless you. We appreciate what you've done. Yes, we appreciate who we are, how you're walking with us. Because yes, it is the grace of God that teaches yes, us God. how to deny godlessness, how to walk in the righteousness of who we are. We don't always do, Lord. We don't always make the right choice. So we, we don't always not sin. However, we are who we are by your, by your blood. Yes. You caused us yes. and called us to righteousness. And that's what we walk out because you're teaching and you're walking us, walking through it with us. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.